He is the king of serpents, unblinking, hypnotic, deadly, and hungry for his own kind. Towering over a wild yet vulnerable kingdom, the King Cobra, the largest venomous snake in the world, is powerful enough to kill a full-grown elephant, and we know almost nothing about it. But that's about to change. Two King Cobras, each surgically implanted with tracking devices, are leading researchers deep into the jungle and into a mysterious world of snake-on-snake -snake violence, cannibalism, and surprising tenderness. Follow these pioneering serpents into their quickly disappearing realms, revealing secret lives no human has ever seen before. In the sun-dappled forests of India, a rat snake tastes the air for the scent of his prey. So intent is the rat snake on his victim, he fails to notice the king. This is his domain, and the king cobra's favorite meal is rat snake. So a second hunt begins. The rat snake sees his mistake, but it's too late. The hooded hunter looms, and the rat snake cowers. The king seems to contemplate his meal. A mistake. There's an intruder in the kingdom. The rat snake uses the distraction to make his escape. The king's dinner will have to wait. The king cobra grows up to almost five and a half meters and has ruled the forests of India for millions of years. But this ancient creature lives in an increasingly human world and its kingdom grows smaller every year. King Cobras reside throughout Indonesia, Malaysia and much of Southeast Asia but a mountain range along India's southwest coast known as the Western Ghats has perhaps the highest density of King Cobras in the world. The Ghats are one of the wettest places on Earth. Vast quantities of India's water run through its labyrinth of rivers and waterways. Endless water providing for limitless life. And countless species. All this life ensures a chain of never-ending death. But it's the King Cobra that rules these forests. It can live up to 30 years of age and never stops growing. To accommodate this endless growth, the king must shed its skin four to six times a year. The first sign, its eyes become cloudy. From a milky secretion released to help separate old skin from new. When its eyes clear, it begins shedding. 
It can take up to 10 days to scrape the used flakes of itchy, irritable skin free. It's an anxious time in the life of a snake. And a bad time to seek out the company of humans. But houses offer warmth, shelter, and a choice of hiding places. It seeks only solitude, but packs enough venom to kill a human many times over and might defend itself if disturbed with fatal consequences. Fortunately, the villagers around here revere the king and know who to call when one takes up residence. Okay. Gauri Shankar, the conservation officer at the Agumbe Rainforest Research Station, has dedicated his life to saving and studying the king cobra. Gauri and the founder of the research station, renowned herpetologist Ram Whitaker, are about to embark on the most ambitious study ever conducted with the king. They want to capture and radio tag king cobras for the first time and follow them into the wild. But they need a king for the experiment, and this distress call may provide the perfect opportunity. There are problems with king cobras sometimes, and no matter how patient and how kindly they feel toward king cobras, having one in your bedroom is no fun. Capturing king cobras is a potentially deadly business. Even the best get bitten. Yeah, just look Gauri has been bitten once. Clear here. Ram's been struck twice, and he's now allergic to the antivenom. If it's anywhere, it's going to be under the baskets. I think I can see her already. Yeah, she's glistening under there. Easy does it. Easy does it. Oh man. Yeah, and she's shedding her skin too. He handles the nearly three-meter king with an ease that comes only from decades of experience. Which is really nice, Gary. It looks like a female. They know by the size of the head and the coloring of the skin that this king okay, is actually a, a queen. Yeah. Before they bag her, they take a photograph to record the pattern on her hood. And it's kind of like fingerprinting an animal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. One more. But one to more. do this, one they more. must make her open her hood. Get a good In other words, make her mad. <laughs> Not something for the faint of heart. With these mug shots, they hope to assess how many snakes live in the area and keep tabs on snakes they've met before. Okay. Yeah. A successful photo ID, yeah. and they offer her a dark escape. A capture bag fitted with a piece of PVC pipe. See the pipe. And the rescue is complete. You're just cool. Normally, they'd release her away from the village. But they've got much bigger plans for today's prize. They'll take her back to the research station to prep her for a groundbreaking role in Cobra research. Until now, studying kings in their natural habitat has been virtually impossible. The forests are too dense and the snakes too elusive. As a result, little is known about the king's life in the wild. Where it goes, what it does, or the size of its range. Ram and Gauri's plan is to surgically implant small radio transmitters into two king cobras and follow them into the wild. Because these little understood animals are now endangered, this research project is more important than ever. India's forests are rapidly disappearing as humans push deeper into the wilderness. It is estimated that snakes kill as many as 50,000 people in India every year. While the king cobra is the largest venomous snake in India, 
There have been only four reported deaths in South India in the past 20 years. And though it has more venom than any other snake, only 10% of the people they bite die. Because kings can control how much venom they release. Muscles around the venom glands contract, squeezing calculated amounts of neurotoxins through its hypodermic fangs and into the victim. Or it can release none at all, which is often the case with humans. After all, venom is valuable. And the king is a prolific killer of other snakes. The king cobra's diet consists almost entirely of serpents. Though it's an apex predator among reptiles, the king increasingly finds itself in competition with people. As India's burgeoning human population continues to grow, farms and plantations carve deeper into the forests of the Western Ghats. And wandering kings often find themselves in unfamiliar territory. Now Gowri and Ram have been called out to a betel nut plantation where a local snake handler has trouble by the tail. It's a king who has taken refuge in a hole at the base of a tree and the base of the tree is at the top of a cliff. I mean, the danger factor is just too much, man. It's, never mind a venomous snake, but how about a 40-foot drop to you?